Peace be with you. I am Father Joel Aquino. Please join me every Tuesday at 7 in the evening Pacific Time and 10 in the evening Eastern Time for an hour of conversations about Word of God and our Christian mission in relation to the many issues that we are facing today through Servants on Air here at PHLV Radio. Please download the PHLV Radio app from the Apple Store and Google Play where we will have a wide ranging and honest discussions on such topics, especially on Christian faith and relationships. We will also be hearing experiences with God from our brothers and sisters, and hopefully this will enlighten us as to live out our day-to-day -day Christian life. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, Unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you, that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over in the 99 that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. How do we become like children? What is your definition of being a childlike? Here are some few thoughts that most likely apply to Jesus' definition of becoming like children, namely trusting, dependent, natural, spontaneous, awe-inspired, without airs, and innocent. Perhaps some of these, or all of them, would qualify for what Jesus is talking about in the Gospel today. I invite you to look at these qualities and try to examine ourselves in relation to our relationship with God and with other people. Try to check if we possess some of these qualities that is so needed to deepen our relationship with them. Trust. Trusting. Are you trusting enough? Trusting the Lord, when you look at children, they trust their parents without question. They may not always want to obey, as you observe, but there is very little reason for children to lack trust that the parent will provide and care for them. 
food and clothing are presumed and not even considered as a concern for them. And if they are in a large city or even in a shopping mall, you can always see that there is safety found in being close to their parent. This trust helps eliminate fear and worry. Children are just but natural, natural people. They're often free to be who they are. They are not overly concerned about looking silly or be embarrassed, they will often naturally and spontaneously be who they are and not worry about the opinions of others. When we look at their innocence, children are a great example of innocence. Children are not yet skewed or cynical. They do not look at others and presume the worst. Rather, they will often see others as good. Sometimes when we look at ourselves and on others, we become biased and judgmental. Maybe we have to learn how to imitate the innocence of children. On the other hand, children are also awe-inspired. They're often fascinated by new things. They see a lake, when they see mountain, when they see a new toy, they're amazed at this first encounter. It is just that they are really easy to please, unlike many of us, unlike us. People has to do to do that with effort just to please us. And when our expectations are not met and met, and then we feel bad about it and we simply say that we don't want it, we don't like it, we do not learn how to appreciate things that are already on our plates. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, all of these qualities that I have mentioned can easily be applied to our relationship with God. We must trust God to care for us in all things. We have to strive to be natural and free, right? In expressing our love without fear, not worrying if it will be accepted or rejected, we have to learn to strive to be innocent in the way we see others and not giving into prejudice and biases. We have to learn to strive to be continually in awe of God and of all the things that comes to us and of all the new things that God does in our lives. Let us look at ourselves and see these qualities in which you find yourself most lacking. How does God want you to become more childlike? How does the Lord want you to become like children so that you can become truly great in the kingdom of heaven. The key to God's greatness is possessing a childlike heart. May we imitate the hearts 
that is willing to share our life, our gifts, our very being on others. Amen. Let us pray. Most loving God, we thank you for your generosity and loving kindness. Help us, Lord, to find this greatness in humility and simplicity. And most of all, Lord, may we truly trust you in all things. May we never doubt your love for us and share this confidence as we relate with other people. In all this, Almighty God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace be with you. I am Father Joel Aquino. Please join me every Tuesday at 7 in the evening Pacific Time and 10 in the evening Eastern Time for an hour of conversations about Word of God and our Christian mission in relation to the many issues that we are facing today through Servants on Air here at PHLV Radio. Please download the PHLV Radio app from the Apple Store and Google Play where we will have a wide ranging and honest discussions on such topics, especially on Christian faith and relationships. We will also be hearing experiences with God from our brothers and sisters. And hopefully this will enlighten us as to live out our day-to-day -day Christian life. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, this is Father Joel, and I welcome you in our tonight's episode. We will be featuring today the Feast of the Transfiguration of Jesus. This month of August, um, particularly August 6, that is the traditional date that we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. Both the Roman and the Eastern Rite Catholics celebrate this feast. It commemorates one of the pinnacles of Jesus' life when he revealed his divinity to the three of his closest disciples by means of a miraculous and supernatural light. Before this, his... Um, triumphant entry to Jerusalem, he climbed the high mountain, a uh, Mount uh, of Tabor. We call that as Mount Tabor with his disciples, uh, Peter, uh, James, and John. And while Jesus prayed there upon the mountain, his appearance was changed by a brilliant white light, which shone from him and from his clothing. During this event, the Old Testament figures of Moses and the prophet um, Elijah also appeared. And um, both of them spoke of how Christ would uh, suffer and die after entering Jerusalem before his resurrection. If uh, you happen to look at the Gospels from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all record shows that the voice of God was heard in this particular story, confirming Jesus as his son, Peter and John make really a specific reference to the event in their writings as confirming the divinity of Jesus and his status as the Messiah. 
um, I would just like to uh, mention uh, in Matthew 17, um, the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 9, and also at St. Luke, chapter 9. I remember Pope Benedict uh, in one of his Masses for this Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord, he said that the Transfiguration of Jesus is a full manifestation of God's light. This light, which truly shines forth from the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ, is both telling us the transfiguration uh, after his resurrection, and also it tells us about his divinity. It tells us about his divine life, and it tells us about his resurrection, and is ultimately a triumphant over the power of darkness of, of evil ones here on earth. Well, um, as we celebrate uh, this month's Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord, it is important really to look at this as opportunity for us as believers of the Lord, to look at Christ, to look at the Lord as the light of the world. Do you see Jesus as the one true light of the world? I invite you to watch this clip and experience truly this great tradition of the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. And invite you as well, most importantly, to read the text, to read this story and allow the word of God to talk to you and transform us. Watch this. Jesus took Peter, James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. The evangelists do not specify the name of the mountain where all this happened, but an ancient tradition going back to origin in the third century identifies Mount Tabor, a hill of about 600 meters, which rises isolated in the middle of the Jezreel Valley as the site where Jesus was transfigured before the astonished eyes of three disciples. Here, where Peter, full of enthusiasm, said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And soon afterwards, Christians built three chapels. Destroyed and rebuilt many times over the centuries, they are today incorporated in this basilica, built by the Franciscans in 1924 as a project of the architect Antonio Barluzzi. The two bell towers on the façade rise above the areas of the two Byzantine chapels dedicated to Moses and Elijah. A must-see destination for all the pilgrims who visit Galilee, it's mostly local Christians who visited Mount Tabor on August the 6th, the liturgical feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. They filled the Franciscan Basilica and the steps of the crypt below it. The Mass, celebrated in Latin and in Arabic, was presided over by the Custos of the Holy Land, Friar Pier Battista Pizzaballa. Mount Tabor signifies light. Jesus has restored to us the dignity of the children of God from the time of creation, when man was created, and he was created in the light. Tabor is the anticipation of what all of us will be, indeed what we already are, by our participation in the resurrection of Jesus. So Tabor is a message of light, hope, life and joy. It was beautiful to see how people, each with their own problems, came singing and standing before God with great joy. To be able to see God, as did the three disciples here, we must be prepared to climb the mountain, that is to say, to accept the effort and the sweat that we require to live each day, said Father Mario Hadjiti, superior of Mount Tabor. Here, with his fellow Franciscans, he looks after the basilica as well as a nearby pilgrim's hospice.
I come from France, and I am very happy to be here at the place where Christ was transfigured. It was a beautiful Mass, and it was good to join in prayer with the local Christians. Local Christians from towns and villages in Galilee, but also from the Palestinian territories. This one came from Beit Jala, near Bethlehem, and it was the first time he had been on Mount Tabor. I have never been here before. We had to have special permission to travel north. Yeah, it means a lot of things. It is above all a sentiment of spiritual joy, this pilgrim says, but it is also the satisfaction to sense concrete closeness between the Galilee and Bethlehem, something often denied to Palestinians in the territories. Following the celebration, a procession winds its way to the Deshendetibus, the ancient oratory which commemorates the command of Jesus to his disciples as they came down from the mountain not to speak about the vision to anyone. Here, the Kustos blessed the people, who were given little branches from the trees of Tabor, souvenirs of this Feast of the Transfiguration, celebrated precisely where it took place. To be here, especially today, August the 6th, is to receive the grace of a calling, as Peter, James and John did that day, in this privileged place of prayer and meditation. When you come here, you come to stop and meditate as did the disciples, to see the beauty of this land and to read this page of the Gospel, which is very beautiful and reflects the beauty of what we have come to be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, in our intercessory prayers, I would like to invite you to pray with me as we pray the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. And I want you to... Uh, Imagine that we are in front of the Blessed Sacrament and if we can also have that beautiful image of the Blessed Lord in the Tabernacle. Let us remember the many petitions and needs of our family, our community, and let us continue as well praying for all of these needs we ask the Lord to bless all of them. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You die, Jesus, but the source of life flowed out for souls. In the ocean of mercy, open up for the whole world. A fountain of life, immeasurable divine mercy, covered the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. We trust in you. Let us now offer the needs of our family. We pray for our loved ones, especially the ones who are in need of God's guidance, protection, and healing. Mention their names. Our family members who are ill and sick, we ask the Lord to touch them today in a very special way. Let us also remember the souls of our loved ones, even the forgotten souls, souls that are in need of God's love and forgiveness. May all of them find God's eternal peace. Also, we pray for the healing of the world. We are all devastated by the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, we pray that this coronavirus uh, will not just transform us, but uh, it may help us as well to 
to strengthen our faith in the Lord. We have to learn how to live with it. This is not already here. Um, may we have the courage to continue our mission and um, may we learn how to live with it. And we should not be scared of, you know, going to church and all that. Uh, may we have the courage to uh, continue our life and our mission here on earth. Also, we pray uh, for uh, many government institutions and the leaders of the world that despite this pandemic of the COVID-19, um, they will pursue still to work for the common good and for the interests of our people. Also, let us remember uh, the health and the well-being of our Pope. And as we all know, he has been really ill with his knee problem. Uh, we pray for his protection. At the same time, we pray for all the bishops and the priests and deacons and all the religious men and women. Also, we pray for uh, the lay faithful, the lay servants, um, the different lay collaborators in our parishes and dioceses um, whose mission has been really very essential in our uh, domestic life and parish life. We pray that these leaders in our parishes and dioceses will continue to uh, inspire many members of our uh, respective churches. Also, we pray for our own personal journey. We pray for our own conversion and for our own healing. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. 
for the sake of a sorrowful passion, a mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, a mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion, a mercy on us and of the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. <laughs> For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and of the whole world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. I am Father Joel Aquino. Please join me every Tuesday at 7 in the evening Pacific Time and 10 in the evening Eastern Time for an hour of conversations about Word of God and our Christian mission in relation to the many issues that we are facing today through Servants on Air here at PHLV Radio. Please download the PHLV Radio app from the Apple Store and Google Play, where we will have a wide ranging and honest discussions on such topics, especially on Christian faith and relationships. We will also be hearing experiences with God from our brothers and sisters, and hopefully this will enlighten us as to live out our day-to-day -day Christian life. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us in tonight's episode. And have a wonderful night. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Have a good night.